Most of our studies are based on uh, looking at sediments. That's contagious, no yawning. Often it's uh, sediment cores. Sometimes they're relatively short cores. Sometimes they're drill cores that are hundreds of meters long. My view is that if it's, if it's mud, we can study it. A lot of these climate studies, um, you have to come up with an accurate age model um, for the sediments that you're trying to date. And this, this whole lab is pretty much uh, set up to determine the age of sediments. This, this room is a, is a magnetically shielded room, so this is a good uh, environment for these cryogenic magnetometers. These samples that you see on here, these little bo plastic boxes, those, those are actually pieces of mud from the center of uh, sediment cores. Uh, over long time scales, the Earth's magnetic field actually reverses polarity. So right now in the northern hemisphere, the inclinations are positive, but if the polarity reverses, then they become negative. Scientists over the last 50 years have put together a thing called the polarity time scale, where uh, back hundreds of millions of years, we know how these polarities have changed and at what ages they've changed. So if you can go and take a sediment core that you know the top of it is zero and you don't know what the bottom is, but you've got a, a fairly continuous section, you can just measure this magnetic inclination down the core and the first time it reverses, we know that the age of that is about 790,000 years ago. And then the next time it reverses is about a million years ago and so on and so forth back in time. So what we found is that variations in the magnetic properties of sediments over time is actually a pretty sensitive indicator of climate change. One of the major things that we discovered is, is that uh, in the early part of the Holocene, uh, sort of 7,000 to 8,000 years ago, there was a, um, a drier interval in the Great Lakes where all the Great Lakes went down uh, you know, tens of meters and became closed basins. So there was no flow between the lakes and no flow out to St. Lawrence. People always thought that the Great Lakes had a positive water balance, that there was, they were always overflowing into the ocean during the Holocene. So this showed that if the climate changes to drier conditions, the Great Lakes are pretty sensitive to that and they can go well down below where they've historically uh, been. There, there, there really isn't any debate anymore that global warming is real and we did it. That ship has sailed. A lot of the paleoclimate studies are trying to reconstruct past climates with a view toward being able to predict future climates, but also is our little part in trying to make a difference in the global picture, which is, from a, from a scientist perspective, knowing what I know, the picture is pretty unrelentingly grim. You know, we're, we're in for a hell of a ride over the next few decades. And uh, I think the sooner people kind of come to terms with that and start to try and do something about it, uh, the better it's going to be.